93.3 The Wolf, the Valley's Rock Station, Fast Freddy here. The 12th, 13th, and 14th of July, right down in Mansfield, Ohio, at the old Mansfield Reformatory, Incarceration 2019. And it's a big three-day music and tattoo festival. And with me right now is one of the guys that is going to be headlining this whole thing. It's Shannon Larkin, and he's the drummer from uh, Godsmack. Shannon, how you doing, man? What's up? Doing good. Got tattoos, got music. It's on. We can't wait for this one, man. You got it. Back now. to Ohio. Now, you guys have been busy this summer. Uh, what, what have you guys been up to, man? God, we've been out since January, first week of January. Went to Europe. Uh, so I actually started the Legends Rise Tour last year with Shinedown to 10 weeks before Christmas. And then, so we've been, we've been going constantly, man, with plans to take this thing in the next fall uh, and just tore our asses off like old school. Yeah, we're, cool. we're reborn. That's the way you got to do it. Any any gigs maybe uh, like recently that stood out above the others? Any ones that you just thought, man, that was really good or something happened that just really separated them from all the rest? Well, man, it's hard to say because we we just got back from this amazing European festival tour in which, you know, it was averaging 50,000, 60,000 people a show. And it was it, it was just some of the most amazing shows uh, with the twilight sun going down certain times of the stage that we went on, like, it was just a magical, uh, amazing sea of people that you could feel this incredible energy coming off of. So I would, I would say if I had to pick, there's, there's a festival called Hellfest, and it's in France, believe it or not, because uh, the French typically hate us. But, uh, right. but that crowd, man. It was insane and uh, one of the best shows we ever did. What's the difference between like the United States audience and then when you play these big festivals where maybe these people don't get a chance to see guys like you all the time? Well, the main thing that I notice is if I stand up and put my hands up in the air looking at the crowd, then they put their hands up in the air. Where in America, sometimes they don't. It's like if I stand up and start clapping in time, in Europe, right away, they start clapping. 50,000 people start clapping in time with you. It's amazing. Where in America, it's not as easy to get people to, I guess, you know, get that involved. Yeah, right. It used That's to be, it community. seems like. But there's really no difference between people, you know. And music is universal language, truly. And so, you know, all the crowds in America are every bit as good as the European crowds. I'm just saying that it's a lot easier to get the European crowds to interact. Like there, there may be more, uh, uh, not as jaded as as American crowds that get so many good shows, so so much. Right. You know, it's it's like it's like the difference of coming to Ohio. I notice like there's much more energy from the crowd in Ohio than if I'm playing in New York City or Los Angeles, where people just are kind of spoiled where they just get so many great shows every week, you know. I would imagine in Europe, since, you know, you guys don't play there all that much, that when they see, you know, bands like you guys coming over there, it's really a happening, and it's a special event more than just like, okay, oh, it's another concert, here we go, you know, down the local shed or whatever. Exactly, dude. That That's the nail on the head right there. We're talking with Shannon Larkin. He's the drummer from Godsmack, and they're coming to the Incarceration Festival in Mansfield. Shannon, uh, of course, one of the highlights of the Godsmack show that everybody talks about is the drum battle with you and Sully. Why don't you tell maybe some people that haven't seen this or experienced it what this thing is all about, because it is definitely one of the highlights of the show. Well, before I joined the band, uh, Tommy, the first drummer, would, would lay a beat down over the song Get Up, Get Out off the first record, and Sully would come out with just a bongo or a pair of bongos, a conga, and, and a timbali, and do just a little jam thing. Well, when I joined the band, I brought in my whole drum kit, and Sully already had his drum kit set up there. So I just set mine up right in front of his. And he's a great drummer, too. So as it were, you put two drummers in a room with two drum sets facing each other. We sat down, and we just started going at it. And so Tony Robbie added the music to, to Get Up, Get Out, and it, it was really born in a day. Uh -huh. It took us months and months, months and months to, to arrange and write to where we presented it live in the way that we do, which, by the way, is pretty cool because we, we bought these called Mobilator drum risers, and they're actually like robots. You know, they spin and move, and you can they go left, right, back, forward. Uh, and our drum roadies are the, are the dudes that, like, drive them out onto the stage, so it's a cool thing, and we finally got that gag to Europe and bought another set of these things. They weigh like a ton, man. Uh -huh. They're incredible. But uh, 
And then we just, man, we face off, and we, we've had this thing develop over the last 17 years into what it is today. And every, every tour, we change it a little bit and tweak it. And, of course, the, the times in which Sully and I get to actually uh, do fills, you know, and battle each other, if you will, uh, you know, those, those things can change nightly. So whatever we feel like playing, we have that four bar. So it's always an interesting thing. It's always a crowd pleaser. Everybody loves it because it's not your typical drum solo where, okay, now the guy's going to show off, look at me, look at me, I'm going to go get a beer or go to the bathroom. It's something that is, is, is a song that's arranged that the, the whole four of us, the whole band's on stage, but it just features the drums, you know. So it's a cool way, the cool way for a band with two drummers in it to get Sully behind the kit, you know, and, and show show everybody that, He's a badass drummer too. Now I saw somewhere where what you guys had a chance to interview interview Neil Pert from Rush for uh, some kind of documentary you're doing. Yes, and uh, that that was just a dream come true. And the dude, uh, like, pretty much watched our whole solo and, and 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 critiqued it, commented on it rather, and and enjoyed it. And so that made us it just came full circle because both Sully and I. First and biggest influence was Neil Peart. So, so was he a cool dude? What's what's Neil like? You know, I met him, and honestly, I was so. It was like meeting Santa Claus or or a unicorn. I, so I was I was just I couldn't barely I I didn't say two words really to Mister Pert. But I stood there and I I did ask him a couple questions. Just I said, let me see your hands. I wanted to see what a man's hands look like when he practices six hours a day and then plays the show. Uh-huh. And sure enough, his, his hands were like hamburger, man. They were, they were torn up. It was amazing. And, uh, but uh, he was super nice, super normal guy. He's really tall, by the way. He's like 6'4", six, 6'5", uh-huh. six, big guy. But, uh, and then I, got, I actually got a picture taken with him, and Sully laughs at that. It's me, me, Neil, and Sully. And the look on my face, dude, is like... It's again. It's like I'm standing beside a mythical creature. It's just, it's amazing. Oh, that's crazy, man. That's really cool, man. That is really cool. Now we are talking with Shannon Larkin, and he is the drummer from Godsmack. Now, uh, Shannon, you you've been around a lot, man. Ugly Kid Joe and Candlebox, and you know, studio work with people like Vanilla Ice and everything. What was it that really made you get into drumming? What what was uh, what was that one moment where you said, "Man, this is what I got to do"? It was when my sister. You know, I've been buying these k records they used to have on TV, and I'd beg my parents, oh, give me that record. It would have, like, you know, a compilation record of 10 hits that are on the radio. Right. And that's how I kind of started listening to music. And my sister came in and said, that sucks. And I check this out and gave me Rush Hemispheres. And I put Rush in that lab. You know, put immediately, the drums spoke to me for whatever reason. And after I wore that one out, went back to my sister's room and said, yep, you're right, my music sucks. Rush is, is the bomb. Uh-huh. What do you got next for him? I'm like, what do you got next? She's like, try this, Zeppelin two. So once I heard that, it was on. I asked my parents for a drum set, you know. So Kurt and Bonham basically, and I know a lot of drummers say that, but it, there's a reason for it. You know, they're, they're probably the two, the two best rock drummers that ever walked the planet. You know, it's kind of crazy you mentioned those K-Tel albums. A while back, I interviewed Dave Grohl uh, when he was the uh, ambassador for you know, Record Store Day. And uh, Dave said the first record he ever bought, the first album, was a K-Tel album, and he bought it because of uh, Frankenstein from the Edgar Winter Group. So those K-Tel albums, wow. say what you want about them, but they might have some kind of uh, influence on people from back in the day, you know, back in our age, you know? <laughs> so. And you know what's funny? Dave, Dave Grohl is also a Virginia guy where I grew up. So right. we grew up around the same area. So maybe there's something in the water there. Maybe yeah, K-Tel was a big influence. Dave was born here in, uh, in, in, our, in Youngstown, in Warren, Ohio. And uh, we did a Dave Grohl alley, and Dave came down and uh, cut the ribbon. And then for National Record Store Day, the Foo Fighters actually did a... Uh, actually did a uh, an in-store concert in a storefront here in, in Youngstown because Dave's whole family, they're all from here. They're all from Warren, Ohio. Wow, man. I mean, I, I'm not sure when he moved to Virginia, but I know that... Yeah. His mom and his dad split. She remarried, and then they, uh, they moved down to Virginia, but his dad stayed here. All his family's here, his uncles and everybody. Well, I saw him play in Scream, uh-huh. which was a punk band from D.C., and it was at the very... The very first uh, uh, rally 
for it was a marijuana rally on on the on the lawn. A hundred thousand people showed up for this. It was the very first one, so it was probably I'd say eighty two, eighty three, or something. And then I saw him again. He had already he had just joined Nirvana, and I was leaving the nine thirty club in DC, and he was coming in all late. And in the 9.30 club, there's this big, long hallway to get in before you get into the club. And it was just him, and I had to leave a little early. He was coming late, and I, I saw him, and he goes, yeah, you know, I just I moved to Seattle and joined this new band, Nirvana. You know, check them out. They have a record out already, and it's really killer. I was like, oh, oh good luck. <laughs> and then the next time I saw him, he's a legend, and, and he was in Foo Fighters. You know, I never saw him in Nirvana. but uh, So that's my Dave Grohl story. And then oh, to this really day, cool. you know, when he says, he's like, hey, Shannon, when he sees me, you know, I'm like, I'm, I can't even believe he knows my name. <laughs> he's just like the coolest guy, man. He's just a great guy, great person. I don't think anybody could say anything bad about that guy, man. I'll tell you. Hey, we're here talking with Shannon Larkin from uh, Godsmack, and they're going to be playing down at the Mansfield Reformatory, where they film Shawshank Redemption. How cool is that? And, of course, uh, you know, we've been talking about the music, but this is also a big tattoo festival, and I know you got a lot of ink. Why don't you tell us a little bit about your ink? Well, first, let me say that Godsmack's Awake video for the song Awake was also filmed here at this uh, at this prison. Look on YouTube and check out the Awake video. It's filmed there. So it'll be, it's a coming back to, uh, for us, too. It's but, awesome. uh, yeah, as far as Ink, man, it was like when I started playing drums, I, I really loved ACDC. You know, it was one of, my, one of my early bands. And Bon Scott was my favorite singer, and he had tattoos. And... I tell you, I went to my parents, I, can I get tattoos? Nope, not till you're 18, you know. So the week I turned 18, I went and got tattoos, and it was because I wanted to look like Bon Scott and also Slim Jim Phantom of the Stray Cats. I was a huge Stray Cats fan, if you can believe that. And uh, both those guys had tattoos, and I wanted to look like them, so I thought it'd be cool. And then here I am in my 50s, and I'm covered, man. So what was the first thing you got? What was the first one? What did you, what did you decide on? I walked into a, a tattoo place in uh, in Carolina, North Carolina. It was actually in uh, Fayetteville, North Carolina, and it was a military town. So there's all kind of a whole row of tattoo shops. And you know, as an 18 year old kid, I, I I didn't know. So I went in. I'm looking at all the flash art on the walls, and I just picked this red specter, and I got that tattooed. And that's the last tattoo that my very first tattoo that I got was the last tattoo that I ever picked off the wall. Everything else, you know, I found the artwork or had custom work, you know. Do you have a, a, a certain favorite tattoo artist uh, that you'd like to go to? Do you have one guy or are you like one of these guys that like to see, you know, whoever does this and that, you know? I rarely get tattooed by the same guy twice, although I have. But, but my last tattoo was done by James Robinson in Nashville, Tennessee, and he is on fire. He's so original and young and, uh, for, you know, he has all these new techniques. And so, you know, the, the, the art of tattooing is definitely growing and uh, trying to keep up with it. But like I said before, I'm covered and I'm not going on my chest because I, I you know, whatever anybody tells you, they hurt. Well, my, my, my bony chest, I'm like, yeah, I'm not good. So now my arms and, you know, I've, I've been looking for place. I've got my first neck piece last month. I got one on my neck last month. I always said I, would, I wouldn't go there, but once once you run out of space and you're addicted, then you just don't get it. Yeah, you got to go. You got to go. You got to do that. Uh, do you have one that's your favorite? Is there one that really means something to you or that's your all-time favorite, or are they like kids and you really can't uh, pick a favorite? Well, I can pick a favorite just because uh, my dad, unfortunately, got cancer and he died young, 63. Oh, boy. And... So, but he got, in 1952, he got this awesome mermaid on his arm when he was in the Navy. And so I took, I, yeah, so I took a picture of that, you know, the, uh, uh, before he passed and went and got a, a tattoo right on my right forearm with the, in memory of dad. And I, I mean, it looks exactly like his, except for back then in the 50s, you know, tattooing wasn't as uh, advanced. And, and so the boobies look like, a W with two dots. So the only thing I changed them, the only thing I changed on my mermaid is she has a nice rack. <laughs>
<laughs> oh, there you go. There you go. Hey, listen, Shannon, I got to wrap things up here because I got to do my break and I got a contest coming up. But I'll tell you what, man, it was a good time talking to you here today. And uh, we're definitely looking forward to seeing you down at Incarceration 2019 at the Mansfield Reformatory. That's coming up July 12th, 13th, and 14th. Uh, Shine Down, Five Finger Death Punch Live, uh, Seether, Buck Cherry, Fozzie, the list goes on. And you guys are going to be the headliners on Saturday night. So I'm sure it's going to be really rocking. So hopefully we'll get a chance to come on down there and see you it's just right down the road here from youngstown man well thanks for having me man i appreciate you taking time to talk to me and it's gonna be awesome we can't wait to rock ohio